What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today we're gonna to talk about what happens if you bring your car to the shop and they end up wrecking it. There's been a story going around about a guy in Florida that took his Audi S4 to a shop to get some performance parts put on it. They did the work, cool. They test drove the car, as they should, and the technician that test drove it got in an accident, got a ticket for doing an illegal U-turn, and so far, like, the story's not too bad, right? The, the tech got in an accident, it happens, everybody's okay, cars are fixable. What happened, or what seemed to happen next, is what everybody has been sending me emails, messages, and tagging me and stuff on. In fact, I even got a message from the owner, Vince, of the vehicle about this. Apparently, the shop doesn't want to pay for the damage to the guy's vehicle. They told him to go ahead and file that under his own insurance, and apparently, anyway, uh, he's the one that's gonna be responsible paying for it because they have a thing in their contract or their repair order that says if any damage happens to your car, you're on your own and they're not paying for it. So I wanna talk a little bit about that today. First of all, this situation really sucks top to bottom. Uh, I, I hate it for the dude that owns the S4. It's not cool in any way and it sucks for the shop too. Every place I've ever worked that dealt with cars in any way, this is how it happened. Let's say the same situation happened to me. Driving the car, do something dumb or don't, doesn't really matter how the car gets wrecked. It's my fault either way. I get in an accident, I call my boss man and say, hey boss man, I uh, just wrecked a customer's car. He comes out, everybody's safe, sound happy. I get to pay the usually insanely high deductible. I think uh, ours at the dealership was like a thousand or two grand. Uh, it was pretty high. Immediately go for a drug test. And then if everything comes back okay, uh, I just go back to work. We fix the customer's car, we being the shop, send it off, get the customer's car fixed, take extra good care of them, right? Really make up for us screwing up, and everybody's happy. Well, maybe not happy, but everybody's hopefully satisfied anyway with the situation. And I've seen that happen a lot of times. Seen guys do stupid things like illegal U-turns, get crazy high speeding tickets, uh, seen other people hit our own technicians, uh, seen guys do it in the shop, not pump the brakes and smash into a toolbox. Seen that three or four times as a matter of fact. And ultimately the dealership took care of it because they carry insurance for this exact type of thing. For all of you guys that are in tech school or thinking about going to tech school or wanna work in a shop, you gotta have a clean driving record. Otherwise the shop's not gonna hire you because they can't insure you. If you do dumb stuff like get a DUI while you're at the dealership, you lose your job on the spot. So every place I've ever worked has worked very similar to that, where the boss man ain't gonna be happy the tech wrecked the car, but ultimately, the insurance of the dealership is what pays for it. There's really no other way to handle it. How are you gonna tell a customer that, hey, Mr. Customer, thanks for paying us two grand to put race car parts on your car. My technician drove it like he's supposed to to make everything, make sure everything was okay. Uh, he got in an accident and now you're gonna have to pay for it. Sorry, see you later. To me, I don't care what's in the contract about that. It's the shop's responsibility. It's the shop that did the damage to the car, right? Uh, so it's the shop's responsibility to pay for it. If a shop isn't carrying insurance for those kind of things, oh boy, it's probably only a matter of time before those doors get closed and locked for good. Like I said, this situation really does stink. That technician didn't set out to damage this dude's car. He made a bad choice while driving, and I think there isn't a person on the planet that has driven a vehicle for any length of time that hasn't made some kind of bad choice while driving. Of course, as professional drivers, which technicians are, um, we need to have our game a little bit higher than that. But again, I've seen this kind of thing happen a bunch of times on just dumb, dumb mistakes. Sucks for the guy that owns the vehicle because, well, now he's got a wrecked car sitting in his garage, and we gotta worry about things like diminished value, reporting accident damage when the car is sold, all things that may not have been an issue down the road. The shop's also in a dilly of a pickle because now, well, they basically have the world watching as, uh, as this guy in the shop kind of battle it out. Ultimately, to me, it's the shop's responsibility. Their insurance should be the one that takes care of it anyway. Yeah, it's gonna cost the owner a little bit of money, but that, my friends, is a cost of doing business, and it sucks, but it's why we do things like carry insurance on our business. This also really, you know, what this boils down to is it sucks for Vince, and I feel really bad for him. Vince, if you watch this, dude, I hate it for you. It's a really nice S4, and the situation sucks. 
But let this be a lesson to the rest of us. You guys, if you're taking your car somewhere, maybe asking them, hey, what happens if someone here wrecks my car is a decent question to ask. Because I know I would want to know if the shop I was taking it to said, well, uh, you know, Mr. Humble Mechanic, first of all, why are you taking your car into a shop? <laughs> Second of all, uh, if we wreck your car, you're going to have to file that under your insurance. I would go ahead and take my keys back and I would head my butt and my car out the door. If they said, you know what, this is something that very rarely happens in the few cases that it did, we were great, we took care of the customer's vehicle, uh, it's hopefully not gonna happen, but here's kind of how we approach it, and they're gonna take care of it, cool. Before you guys sign any of that stuff at the shop, no matter what it is, no matter where it is, what it pertains to, if you're signing your name to something, be sure that you read the words and understand what they mean. If you don't understand what they mean, get some clarification from either a professional or at least ask the shop, you know, challenge them a little bit and see, see what happens. Now, I'm not on the side of burning the shop down, right? I'm not on the side of pitchforks and flames to, uh, to burn the shop down. They screwed up and maybe that is their policy. Again, I think it's a really dumb policy, but I don't own that business. So, you know, I only have so much right to say what I think about it. I can promise you that if I had a shop or a dealership or something like that and I was working on people's cars, you bet your butt I would have some insurance just in case something dumb happened. Like I'm driving down the street and a guy's cutting grass and launches a rock through the window of a customer's car or someone else blows a stop sign and hits me and doesn't have insurance, right? All of these things happen. All of these things could easily happen on a test drive it could happen in a shop. We had a guy pulling in the door and a guy backing out and didn't see him, or maybe did, I don't know, and hit him. Both went for a drug test. Both, well, I don't think anybody actually had to pay for that deductible because it was an internal car, but both ended up having to have their day completely disrupted, and thankfully no one got hurt. So in my opinion, with not all the facts and not all the information, I do think the shop should be the one that pays for that car. But guys, even if I had every ounce of information, it's gonna be a really hard sell on me to convince me that the customer's the one to be responsible for paying for, for the damage to the car. He wasn't driving it, it was under the care of the shop at that point in time. I think the shop should pay for it. I think whether it's the insurance from the shop that pays for it, or whether the shop pays for it out of pocket, ultimately it's, to me anyway, their responsibility. My assumption of what's gonna happen now is this is going to be filed under the vehicle's owner's insurance. The insurance company is probably gonna go after the shop or the shop's insurance policy and get their money. It's just such a hassle for this guy and such a hassle for the shop, which it seems like they've created um, all on their own. I watched an interview where the uh, owner of the shop was on audio saying that it's not his responsibility because it's in their contract, which I find to be total crap. It's a bad situation. It sucks for everyone involved. I hope the shop does the what I think anyway is the right thing and takes care of the guy. It would have just been way easier and cheaper shop just to take care of it, right? Be the hero, not the villain, um, and and just had have taken care of that guy right away, and uh, you wouldn't have to be dealing with it now on the world stage, and you know our man Vince would have his car back. So guys, with that, if this happens to you, or you take your car into a shop, be sure to make sure you're taking it somewhere reputable, somewhere that is not gonna do this kind of thing to you, and read the words when you sign your name to the paper. If you guys have questions or comments or stories about technicians racking your car and it going good, hopefully, or bad, bummer, drop that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.